Hey there, internet friends. Uh, I'm here today in not ideal lighting, but, you know, I, I have to film now. I can't do it later, so it's just, we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, but I'm here today to give you a theory that I was thinking about, uh, about the Cosmere. And I'm not normally a huge theory guy. Like, I, I, I'll read them sometimes from other people, and I might think about it a little bit on my own, but I'm not somebody that spends hours and hours looking over clues and trying to come up with connections between things because I just like it a little bit more when the story surprises me. And I feel that by theorizing, I'm setting up myself to just expect a story to go a certain way, and it just, it, it has a whole host of problems. But the other day, I was thinking of this theory, and it just stuck in my head, and it wouldn't go away. And I already posted it on Reddit, and you may have seen that, you may not have, but it got a bit of a mixed reception, but I still think it's a pretty solid theory, so, uh, Ow. I'm just gonna stop wasting your time. Let's go into it. It's, uh, it's gonna have some major spoilers for Mistborn Era 1, as well as the Stormlight Archive, and it will have some minor spoilers for the rest of the Cosmere as well, so if that bothers you, then you probably shouldn't watch. So a really big theme of the Cosmere so far has been the idea of opposing forces fighting against one another, oftentimes destroying their surroundings in the process. The most obvious examples of this come from the Mistborn trilogy, because, you know, you have ruin and preservation, opposing forces that were constantly working with and against one another at the same time. But then you also can look at the Allomantic Metals and see the same thing. Aluminum takes away your powers, Duralumin enhances it. Copper hides Allomancy, Bronze finds it. Iron pools, Steel pushes, that sort of thing. Opposing forces. But you also see it in other places with the other shards of Adenalcium. You see uh, Endowment and Ambition, which, Ambition's dead now, but, you know, you saw the two of them, those were opposites. And you also have Honor and Odium, and again, Honor's dead now, but they were opposing forces. Now, thousands of years before any of the Cosmere books take place, there was a god named Adenalcium who was killed and broken into the Sixteen Shards. And back in 2013, during an AMA on Reddit, Brandon Sanderson confirmed that there was a force that opposed Adenalcium. Now, it's possible that this opposing force was just the group of people that killed him. In fact, lots of people hasn't, have interpreted Sanderson's words as that's what he's talking about. And he has been cagey about exactly what he was talking about when he said that. And he has also said that the weapon that killed Adenalcium is still around, if not in pieces. And he's also confirmed that that weapon is the source of Hoyt's immortality. So if there really was another being out there that opposed Adenalcium, then that would make sense. That would fit with the themes of the story so far. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to call it the other for the rest of this uh, video. Now, you're probably thinking, well, if there was an other that was still out there, wouldn't we see evidence of it? And I would argue that we already have seen evidence of it in the form of aluminum. Now, think about it. Adenalcium is the source of all investiture, which is all magic, in the Cosmere, and aluminum has consistently shown itself to be a sort of anti-magic. I mean, think about it. In Mistborn, if you if an Allomancer swallows and burns it, they lose all their other powers for a little bit. Uh, in the Stormlight Archive, aluminum can't be sh uh, soul cast, and shard blades can't cut through it. In uh, the Emperor's Soul, aluminum can't uh, is immune to forgery. Like you can't do anything to it with magic. So if Adenalcium is the source of magic, investiture, then the other would be a source of anti-magic, or anti-investiture, and if that's the case, then we've already seen evidence of the other being around. Now, we don't know much about what was happening in the Cosmere before Adenalcium died, and we don't know much about what happened in the direct aftermath either, but what we do know is that Adenalcium created plenty of planets, and he created life on a lot of them. Uh, Roshar is one. Uh, but then there are other planets that were created by his shards after he was killed. Now, the thing is, we don't know much about what Adenalcium was like, but, and here's the thing, he may have been a god that wanted people to follow specific rules, or he wanted people to live a certain way, or he was constantly interfering with the affairs of those planets and not letting them live their own lives. And if that's the case, then the other would probably be much more hands-off. He would be a god that just sort of le created things and left them alone. This is kind of the way that Hoyd acts in the present day. You see, he shows up in all these stories, 
and he does give the good guys advice or information or uh, pep talks sometimes, but he never directly interferes, even though he probably has the ability to do so. Now, if Adonalsium really was a god that went around constantly interfering and dictating how people lived, that would probably upset the other, because, you know, he wants sort of a laissez-faire, hands-off uh, policy towards humans. And it would probably upset a lot of humans, too. And so, my theory is that the other and the group of conspirators worked together to kill Adonalsium. Now, the other might have constructed the weapon that killed him, he might not have, uh, he might have been directly involved, or he might have just uh, encouraged the others to do it, but he was there somehow. And I'm also going to say that Hoyd's final goal is to prevent Adonalsium from ever being reassembled. Now, some people have thought in the past that Hoyt is actually going around trying to reassemble the shards, but I don't think that's true, uh, because one, we don't really see him trying to reassemble the shards, and two, well, that would just be kind of boring, wouldn't it? Like, that's the easiest, most obvious answer that we could come up with. So no, I, I don't think he's doing that. I think that Hoyd is generally a good guy, uh, which is why he helps out the main characters, but he still has that hands-off, uh, laissez-faire approach that the other does, and so that's why he doesn't really inject himself into their affairs too much. And Hoyd isn't the only one that embodies this theme, either. Uh, after Era 1 of Mistborn, uh, Rune and Preservation were combined together into Harmony, and his stated goal is to just make sure that things stay okay so that people can follow their own path. So that's about everything there. Uh, Hoyd is just a chaotic, good traveler going around, trying to help people while also just staying out of their business as much as he can, and the other is just another god that's doing the same thing. Like, he's still around, he just doesn't interfere, he's just watching everybody. And, uh, I know that, yeah, a lot of people don't agree with this theory already, I've had mixed receptions to it already, uh, so let me know what you think down below. Just let me know your own thoughts, let me know... Well, no, just let me know your own thoughts. And, uh, also mark spoilers and all that. And uh, thanks to my patrons, Des Brennan and Christopher Hawkins and all the rest of them, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.